Reading the Times for Saturday, January 18th, 2020. Reading the Times for Saturday, January 18th, 2020. Trump legal team adds Starr and Dershowitz for Senate trial. Mr. Trump's built out team, which will be led by the White House counsel, Pat A. Cipollone, and the president's personal lawyer, Jay Sekulo, faces the dual challenge of preserving the, President Trump, the president's support among Republican senators and presenting his case to the wider public watching on television during an election year. Mr. Trump faces two articles of impeachment accusing him of abusing his office by pressuring Ukraine to announce investigations of his Democratic rivals and obstructing Congress by refusing to provide documents or permit testimony during the House inquiry. During his television appearances, Mr. Starr has argued that the articles of impeachment passed by the House largely along party lines were woefully inadequate to justify removing a president from office. Trump targets Michelle Obama's school nutrition guidelines on her birthday. The Trump administration moved on Friday to roll back school nutrition standards championed by Michelle Obama, an effort long sought by food manufacturers and some school districts that have chafed at the cost of Mrs. Obama's prescriptions for fresh fruit and vegetables. Food companies applaud the proposal, which nutritionists con while nutritionists condemned it, predicting that starchy foods like potatoes would replace green vegetables and that fattening foods like hamburgers would be served daily as snacks. Schools and school districts continue to tell us that there's still too much food waste and the more common sense flexibility is needed to provide students nutritious and appetizing meals. Sonny Perdue, the agriculture secretary, said in a statement, the department finalized a rule in December 2018 that gave school meal providers permission to serve flavored low-fat milk in national school lunch programs and school breakfast programs. Why electing a female president is secondary for some women. Some voters who backed either Ms. Warren or Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota bristled at the idea that they may support them because they are women, even as many acknowledged a greater awareness of the sexism women candidates face. In 2016, a majority of white women backed Mr. Trump instead. In the 2020 primary, Senators Kristen Gillibrand and Kamala Harris made explicit appeals to women. Neither was able to motivate a groundswell of support from female voters, and both have since dropped out. If we don't run women, then we're never going to have a woman in the White House. As she campaigned in Iowa over the weekend, Ms. Klobuchar argued that the sexism faced by women candidates makes them tougher opponents against Mr. Trump. The 119 billion seawall that could defend New York or not. The Corps estimates the wall to cost 119 billion. It is unclear if the city New York State, New Jersey, and Congress will agree to jointly fund the project, which would take 25 years to build. If there's an economically viable and ecologically sound solution that can reduce risks to New York and New Jersey, we should put that forward, said Clifford F. Jones III, the planning chief for the Corps' New York District. New York City, New York State, and New Jersey would all have to approve any barrier and foot 35% of the bill. Pressured by Simons over expose, by Simmons over expose, Oprah Winfrey faced a big decision. We feel more than delivered. We feel we more than delivered a finished film that is keeping with the qualities of excellence, integrity, and veracity, which we hold dear. The film's primary character is Miss Dixon, who whose account details a wrenching accusation of how Mr. Simmons violently raped her after luring Miss Dixon, then a young executive at his label, into his apartment one night under the pretext of hearing a CD. Miss Dixon first told her story publicly to the Times in 2017, and the film, which tracks her over two years, recounts her struggle over whether to go on record with the paper. A month later, executives at Harco responded to the final cut of the film, 
with an email that read in part, we absolutely loved watching the latest cut, it's incredible. After learning that the film had been accepted to Sundance, Apple and Harpo touted the collaboration in a joint news release on December 3rd and called the film a profound examination of race, gender, class and intersectionality and the toll assaults take on the victims and society at large. Trouble began the next day once Sundance official officially once Sundance officially announced its lineup. Miss Winfrey said that over various calls and text messages to her, Mr. Simmons seemed frightened. She said that she often did not respond. Indian general talks of de-radicalization camps for Kashmiris. India's top military commander has created shockwaves by suggesting that Kashmiris could be shipped off to de-radicalization camps, which rights activists consider an alarming echo of what China has done to many of its Muslim citizens. General Rawat made the suggestion about sending Kashmiris to de-radicalization camps at an international affairs conference in New Delhi, attended by government officials, foreign diplomats, business executives, and scholars. Are we talking about summer camps or one-year camps where you strip people of their identity and rebuild them, he said. French strikers shut down the Louvre, setting a new target in a pension fight. Visitors were turned away from the Louvre on Friday after strikers protesting the French government's planned pension overhaul blocked entrances to the museum, leaving tourists from around the world befuddled and frustrated. About 100 protesters prevented visitors from entering the museum, including through the famed glass pyramid that sits in the Louvre's central courtyard, where they waved union placards and chanted slogans against President Emmanuel Macron as tourists looked on glumly. Train conductors, teachers, dock workers, energy workers, opera dancers, and others have gone on strike and taken to the street of Paris and other major cities over the past weeks to protest against Mr. Macron's pension overhaul which would abolish some special retirement plans and which protesters worry will lower the retirement payouts. A blow to the head makes an instant hero in India. We have been politicized by so many people. It gives me so much pride. Ever since modern India was envisioned, a fundamental question has been how Hindu-oriented should be, given that the population, about 80% Hindu, has long hosted a dizzying array of different cultures, including a Muslim minority that today, at 200 million people, would be one of the largest Muslim would make would be on its own one of the mar- largest Muslim nations in the world. Mr. Modi has taken a clear position, pushing a slate of divisive Hindu nationalist policies that play quite well to the large segment of society, but have deeply worried minorities and progressives. A Germany in the making, Miss Gosh calls it. Jawaharlal Nehru University in central New Delhi, where Ms. Gazan Gosh is working on a master's degree on climate change, has been one of India's most reliable incubators of dissent. The attackers carried iron pipes, bi- iron bars, pipes, and sledgehammers, and they knocked Ms. Gosh to the ground and kept hitting, kept hitting her and hitting her. Brazil's top cultural officer fired over speech evoking Nazi propaganda. Mr. Alvim's speech, which was posted on the Culture Secretariat's Twitter account on Thursday evening, showed Mr. Alvim speaking sternly, sitting at a desk. Mr. Alvim's address included verbatim some phrases from Goebbels, including an exhortation to make art in the next decade heroic. It also includes the warning that Goebbels gave that if art doesn't rise to the national moment, it will cease to be- exist. In the background, Richard Wagner's opera, La Hengrin, is playing, a work Hitler described in his autobiography, as one that had been decisive in his life, according to the newspaper Folha de Sao Paulo. Jose Antonio Diaz Toffoli, the president of the Supreme Court, said in a statement that Mr. Alvim's remarks deserved to be repudiated with vehemence, adding that they were offensive to Brazilian people, especially the Jewish community. Olavo del Carvalho, a Virginia-based writer and YouTuber from Brazil who is known for peddling conspiracy theories and informing Mr. Bolsonaro's thinking on societal and intellectual matters, was also critical of Mr. Alvim. Airline apologizes for requiring passengers to take pregnancy test before flight. A Hong Kong-based airline apologized for requiring a passenger to take a pregnancy test before a flight in November to Saipan, the United States territory with Western Pacific, United States territory in the Western Pacific, as a popular destination for so-called birth tourism. Miss Nishida 
25, a Tokyo resident, was raised on Saipan and was visiting her parents when the episode occurred. She wrote in a blog post on the website of the Saipan Tribune newspaper. In response to concerns raised by authorities in Saipan, we took actions on flights to Saipan from February 2019 to help ensure U.S. immigration laws are not being undermined, the airline said. Pompeo said he has never heard that the ambassador might be under surveillance. In text messages released this week by House Democrats, Mr. Parnas is shown to have been in communication last March with a Trump supporter and Republican congressional candidate Robert F. Hyde, an ex-landscaper with a history of erratic episodes, who claimed to have been in touch with someone in Kyiv who was conducting surveillance on Ms. Yovanovitch. In the text message with Mr. Parnas, Mr. Hyde suggested he was in touch with someone who was closely monitoring Ms. Yovanovitch. A lawyer from Mr. Parnas, Joseph A. Bondi, said the text message indicated that his client did not take part in any possible surveillance. Who warns that pipeline for new antibiotics is running dry? With the pipeline for new antibiotics slowing to a trickle and bankruptcies driving pharmaceutical companies from the field, the World Health Organization on Friday issued a fresh warning about the global threat of drug-resistant infections. <laughs> drug company executives, public health experts, and advocates for patients, groups often at odds with one another, have begun uniting in urging Washington to enact new policies and programs that would help shore up the finances of ailing antibiotic companies and lure pharmaceutical giants back to the field. Nearly 80% of those products are being developed by drug companies, the vast majority of them in Europe and North America, and they include a number of novel therapies like phages and antimicrobial peptides that offer the possibility of treating infections without the reliance on traditional antibiotics. A leak, a resignation, and another chance. Ukraine infighting grows. Prime Minister Oleksiy Honcharak, an ally of Mr. Zelensky, tendered his resignation on Friday after clandestine audio re recordings appeared to show Mr. Honcharak criticizing the president's knowledge of economics. Hours later, Mr. Zelensky rejected Mr. Honcharak's resignation in a videotaped meeting with the president's office posted to Facebook. Mr. Zelensky's office issued a statement saying the president had ordered law enforcement to find out within two weeks who was responsible for the recordings, which it described as stemming from a meeting between Mr. Hontrak and other government ministers and central bank officials. Hold the phone, Sydney. It's raining. With the rain, we've pretty well got all the fires contained at the moment, mate. Hopefully they're looking to go out in the not-too-distant future. The amount of rain varied wildly on Friday from a few drops to more than four inches. There are barriers floating on the water and beneath the water at significant inflow points, said Tony Webb, a spokesperson for Water NSW. It's not a panacea, but it's part of a broad response to maintain water quality. Meteorologists and fire officials, like water officials, were quick to warn against viewing the storm as a cure for their country's fire problem. There's plenty of fire on the ground. Climate change deniers, including a federal lawmaker, Craig Kelly, still seized on the rain as evidence that people have been engaged in climate alarmism. On his Facebook page, Mr. Kelly noted that the government's Bureau of Meteorology had predicted that heavy rains might not appear until March or April, after the end of summer. Putin and the art of stepping down gracefully while keeping a grip on power. Several years ago, for reasons that have never been explained, Vladimir, President Vladimir V. Putin vanished from the public eye for more than a week, sending the Russian capital into a tizzy over his fate. Another change might safeguard Mr. Putin against foreign legal action, such as lawsuits related to the downing of a civilian airliner in Ukraine by Russian missiles in 2014, if he steps aside from the presidency. One thing is clear, Putin has proposed a shift from the current system, which is too centered on the powers of the president, to a more complicated system of checks and balances. Vladimir Milov, a former deputy minister of energy and opposition leader, wrote, allowing him, in essence, to control a successor president. Myanmar unrolls a welcome mat for China, but not all the way. China always says their investment is to help Myanmar's development and the people of Myanmar, said Kakalam Samson, the president of the Kachin Baptist Convention, a powerful group in Kachin State, which has been riveted by fighting between ethnic militias and the Myanmar military. With fights between ethnic armies and the Myanmar military continuing to flare along the border with China, Chinese investments have declined, said Yu Soi Nyunt Luin, a minister of planning and finance for Shan State, another conflict-ridden region. Ethnic militia leaders 
seek refuge in China, and Beijing once chartered a plane from China to deliver ethnic representatives to a national peace conference in Naypyidaw, the capital of Myanmar. Iran's Supreme Leader rebukes U.S. in rare Friday sermon. Iran's Supreme Leader struck a defiant tone in a rare public sermon on Friday, calling the United States an arrogant power and telling tens of thousands of chanting worshippers that God's backing had allowed the country to slap the face of the United States. In his first such address in eight years, the leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei sought to rally supporters and undermine critics after weeks of turbulence in the Middle East that brought Iran and the United States to the brink of war and prompted street protests in Iran over the incidental downing of a civilian jetliner by Iranian forces. On Friday, the Ukrainian foreign minister, Vadim Pristeko, said that an Iranian representative would travel to Ukraine next week and that Iran had agreed to hand over data and voice recorders from the downed plane after they had been examined by a team of experts from Canada, Iran, and the Ukraine. Eight Americans were hurt in an airstrike, in an Iranian strike, military says, despite Trump's statement. During a briefing with reporters on Friday, Jonathan Hoffman, a Pentagon spokesman, attributed the delay in reporting the injuries to affected service members returning to duty immediately after the attack and displaying symptoms only days later. Although an initial statement left unclear how many service members needed treatment, a military spokesman later said that only 8 to 11 service members sent for evaluation showed signs of concussions. Captain Bill Urban, a spokesman for the United States Center Command, said the injured troops were taken to American military sites in Germany and Kuwait to undergo screening, and what deemed fit for, when deemed fit for duty, service members are expected to return to Iraq. Canada offers compensation to family of victims of plane down in Iran. At a new com news conference on Friday, Mr. Trudeau said the payments are an interim measure and that Canada will not abandon its effort to make Iran provide substantial compensation to the families of the victims. Members of Canada's Transportation Safety Board are participating in the investigation that Iran is leading into the downing. For three days, Iran claimed that the airplane, Ukrainian International Airs, Airlines Flight 752, had crashed due to mechanical problems, despite the findings of various intelligence services that the plane was shot down. Who, what to know about the Virginia gun rally? Thousands of activists from across the country are expected to descend on the Virginia state capitol on Monday to rally against sweeping new gun proposals supported by state Democrats. Discussing, discussions about the rally have been lighting up online platforms frequented by anti-government militia groups and white supremacists for weeks, and various extremist groups have vowed to attend. The group is organizing charter buses, carpools, and a sushi dinner the night before the rally in, in anticipation of what it is calling the most important lobby day rally that we have ever had. The group's president, Philip Van Cleef, who refers to himself as an extremist, issued a statement saying the rally was meant to be peaceful protest about gun rights and nothing else. In a state where hunting is a popular sport and gun ownership is common in rural areas, most in attendance are expected to be gun rights supporters. Three U.S. airports to check passengers for a deadly Chinese coronavirus. The first flight to be screened will arrive at New York's Kennedy International Airport on Friday night. Dr. Martin Cetron, the director of the CDC's Division of Global Migration and Quarantine, said in a news briefing, the new coronavirus appears to cause a less serious illness than SARS or MERS. But Dr. Cetron and Dr. Messonnier warn that the infection is new, little is known about it, and the situation is rapidly evolving. The severity of SARS and MERS puts health officials on high alert when dealing with new coronaviruses, Dr. Messonnier said. Who is the man behind the gun rally that has Virginia on the edge? As part of the opposition to the effort, Mr. Van Cleve, who did not return calls for comments, has helped convince more than 100 cities and towns in Virginia to either vote in support of gun rights or declare themselves Second Amendment sanctuaries, in which officials say they would resist any new gun laws. Mr. Van Cleve has said that he expects as many as 50,000 people to show up to support gun rights on Monday, the traditional lobbying day at Virginia State Capitol, which is held on the holiday, which is held on holiday for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday because so many people are off work, claiming the label extremist but advocating peaceful protest, although he has said he wants Monday's rally at the state capitol to be a peaceful event about gun rights and nothing else. Mr. Van Cleve also welcomed militias and other anti-government groups to help lobby state lawmakers in opposition 
to the proposed gun control measures for shrinking cities an aggressive way to dodge the census bullet. The recent annexations in Decatur and some other Illinois cities have been novel because rather than adding land as a consequence of organic growth, city leaders expanded the boundaries as an answer to population decline. For decades, Decatur allowed property owners to connect to the city's water systems or build on its fringes, on the fringes of the city limits without actually becoming a part of the city. If you live in the city, wouldn't you want this guy who lives next door but is just outside the city to pay his fair share, said Mr. Ryden. SpaceX test delayed to Sunday. SpaceX launch highlights from the Crew Dragon safety test. Blah, 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 blah. Since 2012, the company founded by Elon Musk has been flying to the International Space Station for NASA, but has never before carried a human crew, only cargo. In a final major milestone before it's ready to start taking NASA astronauts to the station, SpaceX will test a system that is to rescue astronauts in case of emergency during launch. Now targeting Sunday, January 19th, with a six-hour test window open at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1300 UTC if this test is successful, Ms. Luder said the next Crew Dragon mission, which is scheduled to take two ast NASA astronauts, Douglas G. Hurley and Robert L. Beck Becken, to the space station, could launch as soon as next, next March. Trump campaign plans greater focus on bundlers. President Trump's re-election campaign plans to step up its efforts to capitalize on the so-called bundlers, supporters who can raise money from friends and business associates in increments up to 2800 the legal limit for a level of giving that has lagged in the campaign despite a far more sophisticated fundraising operation than existed in 2016. The campaign has excelled at small-dollar fundraising online and at raising six-figure donations from wealthy individuals and corporations from a joint effort fundraising arrangement between the Trump campaign and the Republican National Committee. Mr. Trump's team has named Kimberly Guifoy, Guifile, the former Fox News personality and girlfriend of the president's oldest son, who has also become a top campaign surrogate as the national chairwoman for the Trump Victory Finance Committee. Joe Biden's poll numbers are steady, but are they immovable? In CNN poll last month, 40% of likely Democratic voters who responded said they thought Mr. Biden would be the strongest candidate against Mr. Trump. As a result, Mr. Biden has built a remarkably broad coalition of voters with support cutting across race, gender, and educational background. They're coming from all walks of life. About as many women support Biden as do men, he is the most popular candidate among black voters, a key constituency, particularly in the primaries. Supreme Court to consider limits on contraception coverage. The new case presents the opposite question. Can the Trump administration allow all sorts of employers with religious or moral objections to contraception to opt out of the coverage requirement? Bridget Amiri, a lawyer with the American Civil Liberties Union Reproductive Freedom Project, said the Trump administration's approach was unlawful. The Trump administration's attempt to take away people's insurance coverage for contraception is one of the administration's many attacks on the access to abortion and contraception. Marjorie Denefelser, the president of the Susan B. Anthony List, an anti-abortion group, said by way of example that the Little Sisters of the Poor, an order of nuns who had intervened in the case, should not be forced to provide coverage at odds with its members' faith. The Trump administration took side of the religious employers, saying that requiring contraception coverage can impose a substantial burden on the exercise of religion. Court quashes youth climate change case against government. Reluctantly, we conclude that such relief is beyond our constitutional power. Rather, the plaintiff's impressive case for redress must be presented at the political branches of government. The two members of the majority of the three-judge panel thus agreed with the Trump administration that the issues brought up in the case, Juliana versus the United States, did not belong before the courts. The appeals court decision reverses an earlier judge ruling, ruling by a district court judge, Ann Aiken, that would have let the case go forward. I've always thought this case was creative and interesting, but a long shot, she said. After listening to the oral argument, I thought that the court would find some way to dismiss the case that reflected its concerns about just how big just how big the remedy was that the plaintiff was seeking in the case. That is, she said, to get the United States to stop emitting carbon in the atmosphere. She noted that even the majority opinion was very sympathetic to the arguments of the young people and accepted the need for action on climate case. case. Supreme Court to hear timely case for on electoral
college voters. A fourth Democratic elector in Washington state voted for Faith Spotted Eagle, a Native American tribal leader and prominent opponent of the Keystone XL pipeline, and a Democratic elector in Hawaii voted for Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont. Congress has accepted the vote of every vote contrary to a pledge of expectation. Congress has accepted the vote of every vote contrary to a pledge or expectation in the nation's history that has been transmitted to it. A total of more than 150 votes across 20 different elections from 1796 to 2016. The petition in Washington State case said, citing data from Fair Vote, a nonpartisan voting rights advocacy group. Congress has only once debated the question when some lawmaker objected in 1969 to counting a, Republican's electors, a Republican elector's vote for George C. Wallace after Richard Milhouse Nixon won the popular vote in the elector state. A report says Secret Service return to Treasury could harm Homeland Security. President Trump's plan to move the Secret Service from the Department of Homeland Security back to the Treasury Department risks unraveling the cabinet agency responsible for securing the United States, according to a report issued by a group of government officials formed to study the move. While some senior officials at the Department of Homeland Security have expressed concern about losing an agency with those investigative components, High-ranking Secret Service agents have long felt neglected by the department. The working group also considered breaking up the Secret Service, according to the report, and sending the investigative branch to the Treasury Department while keeping the protective arm at the Homeland Security Department. In Oval Office meeting, Trump expressed his regret on vaping policy. President Trump upbraided the Health and Human Services Secretary on Thursday over his administration's ban on most flavored e-cigarettes, a proposal that Mr. Trump had vacillated over for months but ultimately endorsed, according to three people familiar with what took place. After one of Trump's pollsters, Tony Fabrizio, described the importance of health care as an electoral issue, Mr. Trump reached for the phone on the Resolute desk and called Alex M. Azar II, the Secretary of Health and Human Services. We're going to protect our families, we're going to protect our children, we're going to protect our industry, Mr. Trump said at the time, noting that some products could be back on the market very quickly, that the president, not the health of not the Department of Health and Human Services or the Food, Drug, Food and Drug Administration has become so associated with the ban has frustrated him. Dust off the impeachment, impeachment tables. A Senate trial is underway. 21 years ago, Capitol Hill Carpenters custom designed and built a pair of curved tables that could fit into the cramped Senate chamber and serve as workspace for the House managers and White House lawyers during the impeachment trial of President Bill Clinton. They made them after the impeachment articles were voted on. James W. Ziegler, the former state sergeant-at-arms, said of the tables, On Thursday, the senators voted unanimously to allow the sergeant-at-arms to install appropriate equipment and furniture in the Senate chamber, with a proviso that the furnishings shall be placed in the chamber in a manner that provides the least practicable disruption to Senate proceedings. Because smartphones, tablets, and other electronic gadgets are expressly forbidden while the trial is in session, Senators will be required to leave them behind. Ken Starr returns to the impeachment fray, this time for the defense. The addition of Ken Starr to President Trump's legal team for the impeachment trial is a shrewd move, said Ken Gormley, the president of Duquesne University and author of The Death of American Virtue, about the struggle between Mr. Starr and Mr. Clinton. In his report to Congress, Mr. Starr argued that Mr. Clinton had committed an impeachable offense by unlawfully invoking executive privilege to try to block witness testimony and documents. Throughout the Clinton impeachment, Judge Starr consistently opposed the invocation of executive privilege and called for all witnesses to come forward. Trump will have a hard time squaring that historical record with his current conduct. Others said Mr. Starr would be best suited to explain the principal differences because of his experience. Democrats released more material from Lev Parnas, on Ukraine campaign. The documents released by House Democrats included WhatsApp messages between Mr. Parnas and Derek Harvey, an aide to Representative Devin, News News Devin Nunes of California, the top Republican on the House Intelligence Committee and a leading defender of Mr. Trump. The messages also suggest, messages also suggest that Mr. Harvey, a retired Army colonel who previously served on the National Security Council under Mr. Trump, 
met at the Trump International Hotel in Washington with Mr. Parnas, Mr. Giuliani, and John Solomon, a conservative journalist who worked closely with Mr. Parnas on articles that injected the Ukrainian officials' claims into the conservative media, reinforcing the pressure campaign Mr. Hyde who had a history of erratic behavior, initially claimed that the messages were a prank, saying on Twitter on Tuesday that he was playing with Mr. Parnas. Alan Dershowitz adds Trump to the list of his high-profile clients. On Fox News, he noted that he had a perfect, perfect sex life during the relevant period of time. The accusations even inspired him to write a book, Guilt by Accusation, The Challenge of Proving Innocence in the Age of Me Too. Since Mr. Trump took office, Mr. Dershowitz had frequently visited the West Wing, consulting with the president and his top aides on various issues, including the Middle East and the Mueller inquiry. Mr. Trump took greater interest in him after his regular Fox News appearances, during which Mr. Dershowitz often attacked legal grounds for the special counsel's investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election and defended the president's right to fire Mr. Comey as the FBI director. Despite Mr. Trump's frequent twit tweets, Praising him, Mr. Dershowitz has always maintained a, to reporters that he has no interest in formally joining Mr. Trump's legal team. What grade does Trump's China trade deal deserve? Incomplete. The key deal terms are straightforward. The China, China has promised to buy a heaping pile of stuff from the United States over the next two years and to make it a little easier for American companies to do business in China. Mr. Trump views trade as a competition between the United States and China, and he follows the balance of trade in much the same way that sports fans keep track of score. China agreed to facilitate imports of meat and biotechnology products, and the deal makes it easier for American financial services companies to operate in China. Trump's evil is contagious. Under Trump, the United States is a confederacy of corruption driven by a thousand points of evil. The Trump presidency has shown just how many ostensibly good people will do nothing and how evil, when given a free reign at the top, trickles down. The greater evil is the violation of the lofty purpose written into the country's founding documents. Can anyone save the GOP? Bill Weld, a former Massachusetts governor with, and currently long shot, make that long shot candidate for the Republican Party's presidential nom nomination, is a keen study student of New Hampshire politics. Weld reasons, why not try to make it happen to Donald J. Trump, too? That's the hopeful thought, and what otherwise seems to be a wheel's hopeless bid to derail a president whose support among Republicans was 89% last month, according to Gallup. On the latter, Weld knows a lot about impeachment process, having worked on the House Judiciary Committee staff as a young lawyer in 1974 as it considered articles against Richard Milhouse Nixon, capitalism and culture side. Western politicians, as if trying to justify the unholy collusion, for years argued that rising living standards in China would produce a middle class who would demand freedom and democracy. Can the Western world see that happening? That helping them is not. Can the world, Western world see that helping them is not charity but self-defense? When protesters in Hong Kong took to the vast northwest area in China called Xinjiang, they can see what happens when Beijing-engineered change reaches full throttle. The chief executive of Volkswagen, which leads China in car sales, was recently asked for the company's comment on the concentration camps in Xinjiang. War has ripple effects. Cleve has been wounded in Ramada, Iraq, nearly four years earlier on April 1, 2006, nine days before the three-month mark of our marriage. After Cleve's first overdose, the doctors had few options available. At 19 years old, Cleve signed his life away, even if he didn't know it at the time. Issues of gender and electability in the Democratic race. If some 40,000 Trump voters in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania have voted for Hillary Clinton, she would have added an electoral college victory to her 3 million vote popular, to her 3 million vote popular victory. Sexist attitudes about women candidates cost them votes, and this is most true for the president, since some voters have trouble envisioning a woman in the commander-in-chief role. Each vote has a responsibility to each voter has a responsibility to simply cast a vote for his or her preferred candidate. That is good faith participation in our electoral system. The opening moves in the Trump impeachment trial. The Ukrainian government is investigating corruption just as the Trump administration requested. Not only are the Ukrainians investigating allies of Mr. Trump for spying on an American ambassador, but they're also asking the FBI to help them investigate possible Russian attacks against the computer systems of Burisma, the Ukrainian company whose board Hunter Biden served on. 
Congratulations, Mr. Trump. You have finally succeeded in getting the Ukrainian government to fight corruption. Citing murder, top Trump official condemns NY sanctuary policy. How much more do you need to take enforcement action against an illegal alien? A spokeswoman for Mayor Bill de Blasio called Ms. Fuerte's death an absolute tragedy. Fear, hate, and attempts to divide are signatures of the Trump administration, not New York City. We are the safest big city in America because of our policies, not in spite of them, said the spokeswoman. Freddie Goldstein, Mr. Al Benz, the acting ICE director, exhorted New York City's sanctu New York sanctuary policies because beyond the death of Ms. Fuertes, saying the city refused to honor thousands of detainers each year and failed to cooperate in other ways, such as barring ICE agents from conducting interviews in city jails. President Trump has repeatedly attacked sanctuary cities, which include New York City, Chicago, Philadelphia, and San Francisco, saying that refusing to cooperate with federal immigration authorities to transfer those arrested into the custody of ICE jeopardizes public safety and that such places have become safe have become havens for criminals. Weinstein jury has only two white women as prosecutors protest. Over the last two days, Mr. Weinstein's lawyers have successfully used their right to reject a number of possible jurors for no other reason than to limit the number the white woman on the panel, prosecutors said. Ms. Aluzzi did not say in court why having few white women on the jury would be problematic for the prosecution, but the district attorney's office appears to be cooperating on the theory that such jurors were jurors were likely to be symptomatic, sympathetic to Mr. Weinstein's accusers. Weinstein seeks to move... Right As both sides started picking jurors on Thursday, the judge overseeing the case, James M. Burke, acknowledged that many of the potential jurors had likely read about Mr. Weinstein. Ex-Rep Chris Collins gets 26 months pro prison sentence in insider trading case. The office of Jeffrey S. Berman, the United States Attorney in Manhattan, sought a sentence of close to five years, writing to the judge on Monday that Mr. Collins came to embody the cynical idea that those in power who make the laws are not required to follow them. Mr. Collins, a wealthy entrepreneur who was first elected to Congress in 2012 from the 27th District in Western New York, was narrowly re-elected for a fourth term in 2018, months after he was indicted. Mr. Wilkinson's email sent to Mr. Collins and other board members reported that an experimental multiple sclerosis drug called MIS-416 that the firm was developing had failed the clinical trial. Extremely bad news. Mr. Wilkinson wrote in the email, according to the indictment, the indictment said Mr. Collins responded, wow, makes no sense. How are these results even possible? Mr. Collins quickly set out to reach his son to warn him of the bad news. Landlord in deadly East Village explosion sentenced to at least four years. Hyonil Kim, the owner of Sushi Park, a popular Japanese restaurant on the building's ground level, said he had wondered how the apartments got hot water and cooking gas since only gas lines in the building were dedicated to his restaurant. In August 2014, Con Edison responded to calls from people smelling gas, discovered that the utility gas intended only for Sushi Park had been tapped with flexible plastic pipes to provide gas to the apartments. Mr. Kukik even warned a tenant to say, if you don't have gas, you, to say, if asked, you don't have gas. The explosion erupted when two men turned the gas back on just minutes after Con Edison inspectors left the building. Raptor, rapper Pop Smoke is charged with stealing a $375,000 Rolls Royce. Pop Smoke, whose real name is Bashar Jackson, was charged with a crime rarely seen in federal indictment, interstate transportation of a stolen vehicle. In October, Pop Smoke was one of five New York rappers that the New York Police Department prevented pr performing at Rolling Loud Hip Hop Festival in Queens, contending that they had been affiliated with recent acts of violence citywide, but not specifying any criminal behavior. Days later, the official said Pop Smoke posted the photo on Instagram with the Rolls Royce in New York. A doctor abused her. Her name is on her child's birth certificate. His name is on her child's birth certificate. The legislation stems from Ms. Hochstetter's experiences with her doctor, Mr. Haddon, who had been accused by multiple patients of sexual abuse, including Evelyn Yang, whose husband, Andrew Yang, is a Democratic presidential candidate. It's sort of a founding document for your child's life. For Miss, for Miss Hochester, seeing her doctor's name on her daughter's birth certificate was a painful reminder of how she should have been one more, of what should have been one of the more joyous times in her how one of how what should have been one of the most joyous times in her life was marred by a traumatic one. She said, so Miss Hochester contacted Mr. Levine, who leads the city council's health committee. 
Trump fans or not, business owners are wary of Warren and Sanders. In campaign speeches and debates, some said, Mr. Sanders and Ms. Warren portray business as exploiting the American economy system, the American economic system, instead of building it, and as contributing to income inequality, inequality instead of creating wealth. Trump may be a loose cannon on international stuff, but domestically, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders are loose cannons on restricting business, Mr. Gimbel said. Giving away things away for free is a slap in the face of people who are playing by the rules. Where does it stop? Are we going to stop playing, paying off mortgage debt? He mentioned several other concerns about Mr. Sanders and Ms. Warren, including a wealth tax, broader eligibility for overtime pay, and pro-worker rulings that could come from a liberal National Labor Relations Board. Panicking about your kids' phones? News research says don't. Research has shown that excessive phone use can exacerbate the problems of certain vulnerable groups, like children with mental health issues. In most cases, they say, the phone is just a mirror that reveals the problems a child would have even without the phone. The researchers worry that the focus on keeping children away from the screen is making it hard to have more productive conversations about topics like how to make the phones more useful for low-income people who tend to use them more, and, or how to protect the privacy of teenagers who share their lives online. Please stop big tech. Small rivals tell, please, please stop big tech, small rivals tell lawmakers. The House Antitrust Subcommittee has interviewed dozens of companies that accuse the big tech companies of lawfully stifling competition. Speaker Nancy Pelosi said on Thursday that Facebook just cares about your money and the company intended to be accomplices in misleading the American people. Former Vice President Joseph R. Biden Jr., who has been the focus of false ads by President Trump's re-election campaign, told the New York Times editorial board board that Facebook and other internet companies that allow the spread of misinformation on their sites should lose a critical liability shield for internet platforms. The executives who argued at length that companies like Google and Amazon unfairly hurt their businesses received little pushback from lawmakers. Federal workers profit from tobacco and oil even if they don't want to. To get an ESG fund added to your plan, you have to persuade those decision makers, which isn't always easy. The plan is cheap. We should all have retirement accounts with such low cost and track index funds, which tend to do better than most actively managed funds over time. Federal employees can bet on energy stocks via a mutual fund or shun them as they wish, just, or just stick with the exposure to the stock indexes as already a part of the plan. Overwhelmed by medical bills and finding help on TikTok. Miss Burns, 40 of North Carolina, instructed her viewers to call the hospital and ask for an itemized bill with every single charge, explaining that the billing department might then remove absurd fees like a $37 Band-Aid. Irene Filippo, an advocate for patients dealing with medical bills, said there was a widespread need for education about handling medical costs. Ms. Filippo shared several tips for people dealing with medical bills, request a review of the level of care, along with an itemized bill. Disney drops Fox from name of studios it bought from Rupert Murdoch. Sounds like Trumpets, 20th Century Fox, a name and clique lit, lo, lit lo, logo that stretches back 85 years in Hollywood, is dropping the word Fox, a move that may prevent customers from mistakenly thinking the movie studio has anything to do with Rupert Murdoch's polarizing Fox News media empire. Mr. Murdoch still owns the Fox Broadcast Network, Fox News, and the chain of 28 local Fox television stations, among other media assets. The Fox brand began synonymous with Mr. Murdoch, starting in the mid-1980s, when he bought a stake in 20th Century Fox Movie Studios and founded the Fox Broadcasting Network to compete with ABC, CBS, and NBC. He eventually took full control of the movie studio. A common charge, charger for all phones? The EU is on the case. Chargers have been estimated to produce more than 51,000 metric tons of waste annually in the European Union. There are now three major types of charging plugs, according to the European Consumer Organization, which backs the efforts to standardize chargers, USB 2.0, Micro B, USB-C, and Apple's Lightning. A year ago, the company argued that a single standard would freeze innovation rather than encourage it. A new charger standard would make current chargers obsolete, it added, which is bad for the environment and unnecessarily disruptive for custom customers. At the hearing on Monday, members of the European Parliament lamented the failure to legislate a universal charger, raising environmental concerns and blaming industry for thwarting measures. Eight billion dollar verdict in drug lawsuit is reduced to 6.8 million. The verdict in October was the first to award punitive damages against Janssen Pharmaceuticals, a Johnson & Johnson subsidiary. Judge Kenneth J. Powell Jr. of the Philadelphia Court of Common Pleas 
dismissed other portions of Johnson & Johnson's post-trial motion. In a statement, Andrew Wheatley, a spokesman for the Johnson subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson, said the court had appropriately reduced the excessive punitive damage awards, but said the company would appeal the verdict. With the deficit swelling, U.S. will issue new class of bonds. With years of trillion-dollar deficits ahead, the Treasury Department said it will soon begin issuing 20-year bonds in an effort to generate investor interest in government debt. The department has also considered introducing longer-term debt, including a 50-year or 100-year bond, as a way of financing the swelling deficit and taking advantage of historically low interest rates. At the DealBook DC Strategy Forum in September, Mr. Munich said he was considering extending the portfolio and that the Treasury Department would issue a 50-year bond if there's demand for one. A new generation seeks to give it all away now. If they're going to have a family foundation to make an impact, it's a great model. Family foundations have a reputation for providing a steady drip of funding to established institutions, and their giving can act as a bond for extended family members. These time-limited foundations, also known as spend-down or limited life foundations, are on the rise, according to a study from the Rockefeller Philanthropy Advisors and Camden Wealth which looked at about 200 family foundations that combined give $2.4 billion annually, an area like the environment with, was a focus for institutional foundations, but not family foundations, the Rockefeller Report found. You really can lower your car insurance costs. Average annual, automobile, average annual automobile insurance rates in the United States rose to $1,548 in 2019, according to an analysis by The Zebra, an insurance comparison website. If you find a lower rate, state insurance department websites often offer information about consumer complaints to help you evaluate a company's record of hand handling claims before you switch. People who drive infrequently may want to consider usage-based insurance, which uses technology to monitor driving and can save about 3%, the report found. And that has been Reading the Times for Saturday, January 18th, 2020. Reading the Times for Saturday, January 18th, 2020.